It is the 19th of June, 2024. This is Wikispeed Standup. Uh, go ahead, Lauren. This is Lauren Salter, Gabriel Island, British Columbia, Canada. And I worked uh, for a couple hours um, today. Um, I was uh, trying to do something for an hour with the uh, uh, Wi-Fi connection. I haven't, didn't get too far, um, mainly because I, I want to do this. Uh, yeah, so I, I, I looked at a few things just by turning it on. I, that was the thing where I was going to just turn it on and see what I could do. Uh, but I don't, I can't see into it the way that admin guy could. And so I, uh, I'm going to hook it up again to the monitor and, and, um, put in the, uh, supplicant file because it says if you have ssh there the empty ssh file and the supplicant file that describes your wi-fi then uh it'd be nice to have it it still will connect automatically to things but it's not working at home so uh and i'm going to reach out and and maybe get get some help on the why it's not working here and it did and i'm not sure he totally understood because he was talking about the, what sounded like the hotspot thing and i i kept saying the wife but i wanted to connect to the wi-fi so he set up his hotspot on his phone as the wi-fi connection and he said it worked but i'm not sure he totally understood but he was talking about uh, a number after the the name of the uh server and the uh, the server when the name gets changed it, it's it's complicated anyway uh so i decided to do the hardware part so i'm gonna flip this around and show it where i'm at okay so uh Yeah, the picture's hard to see. Okay, so where I'm at is I managed to slip the other spacer in, mm -hmm. but it's a little crooked, so I can't screw it on. But in fact, I like it just hanging there. So then I was thinking it's just kind of partly stuck in, if you can see it. Mm hmm I was just thinking of putting some thread lock in there because I like it up that high. Well, if you've got the other end tight, um, I don't think it's going to move um, yep. unless you're going over some really rough terrain. I'm assuming yeah. that you're going to be testing this mostly indoors. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, for now. Because uh, once, yeah. once you get to moving it outside, You'll probably take yeah. the extra spacers out anyway because you won't need the connection yeah. to the uh, yeah. terminal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good, good thinking. Yeah, so I'll put uh, and then and then I'll put the little tiny uh, nuts back on. Yep. Okay, and but I'll put a little dot of thread lock in the uh, where it's just touching it. Yeah, it'll, it'll keep it from shifting thing. around. That that's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So that's that. Uh, and uh, coming week, um, I'm away at my half marathon in Vancouver. So, um, and I'm, I, I'm going uh, tomorrow because I have to eat a lot <laughs> the next few days and they have good restaurants in Vancouver. So it's carb loading. So uh, they said, um, Something like 10 bagels a day <laughs> for yeah. three days. Yeah. Well, not quite a dozen, but close enough. Yeah. And, uh, but I'll be back and I'll be sort of tired on Tuesday. So I should be able to do some things, but I'm going to say one thing, which is, um, yeah, so uh, I'll, I'll get this jury rig thing so he, things are accessible and finish the build and then i'll work on uh getting it to one way or another to connect to wi-fi and that's that's what i'm planning for this week and blocks are uh, just 
tying other things. Uh, actually, a, a block is kind of uh, tidying my place because I still have all these aquaria and aquarium equipment. And uh, so I can't kind of uh, move around very well. I, I mean, they're not, they're taking up one bedroom, uh, not, not really, it's a, a shelf at one end of one bedroom and uh, about 20% uh, of the living room. <laughs> so, but they're heavy, so I can't move them. So, uh, but other than that, so I, actually somebody came, the other problem here is no one can afford to live here now that the prices have gone up. So there's hardly anyone who does house cleaning. <laughs> so I haven't been a house cleaner for five years. Uh, but a friend of mine who sort of does organizing came over and had time. Uh, and so uh, I'm able to move around my living room a little more now. And that's kind of uh, opened up a bunch of stuff. And I'm able to uh, just get things uh a little more uh, orderly. So that's it. Back to you. Okay. Um, it's Michael Olchuk, Saskatoon, Canada. Uh, not a lot of uh, progress for this week. Um, for my Little Red Wagon project, or the Sun Founder, I, I located two Raspberry Pis to use with my new tank kit, along with a couple of micro SDs. So I'll be bringing those with me to the lake. I know I said I was going to have one at the lake and one at home. I've got to get them to uh, to a certain. I've, I've got to get the kit put together and make sure that they're both kind of at the same place so that I, I'm not struggling. Anyway, um, Polaris project. I powered up the Polaris Ranger with the original battery charger and rediscovered why I wasn't using that. When the battery charger powers up, it sees that there's no battery in the vehicle and it shuts itself off. So I'm trying to find a, um, a resistor and a battery of some sort to put in there so I can put it on the charger and have it see some sort of battery so that it actually gives me enough voltage to, to run the controller. Controller is giving me a fault code right now that says that the throttle has an issue or that's, that's the highest probability. And um, it's it's running um, 56 volts, which is higher than it's supposed to. So I'm trying to find a way to get the voltage to the controller low enough that I can find out whether it's actually a problem with the controller or whether it's just too much voltage. For the pump runtime, um, I found out that the, the water got into my enclosure. I mentioned that last week. Uh, the ESP32 is fine. The power supply shorted out. So the uh, five volt micro USB power supply is, is totally gone. <clears throat> I don't know. Actually, I don't know whether it's the cable or the power supply. Um, I know that there's no power getting to the uh, ESP32. So that's what I got done this week. Um, next week, I am bringing the uh, Raspberry Pi 3 Plus, a couple of micro SD cards, the Sun Founder car, etc., with me, um, so that I can hopefully get something working. Um, so that when you get yours done, we've got something to work on together. Uh, the Polaris project, um, as I mentioned, I got to get a, f a battery of some sort so that I can tell whether or not the controller is still okay. I only have one controller that works, and it's uh, $3,500 new. So if it's not working, I probably won't continue with the project. Um, so that's why I'm trying to find a battery that will let me, let me tell whether or not it's running or not. Um, the pump runtime monitor, I have to find another uh, USB power supply um, and get it running again. And that is um, about it. I have blocks for yard work and garden work and a couple of things that I was doing with guys over at TechWorks, which is the makerspace. So this is my last week before I'm up at the lake most of the time. So whatever I'm doing for them, that's I got to get done this week. And uh, that's about it for me. Back to you. Okay. So I, I'm going to, uh, I did um, probably about half of what I was hoping to uh, in terms of time. 
uh, and I have no doubt that it, it's going to, uh, I'll, I'll get the other solved. Uh, so, uh, give myself, uh, four for, um, for the, uh, uh, points done and, uh, one for coming to the meeting. And, uh, so that's, uh, five, five. And the team is, uh, I'd say an eight and, uh, and uh, process improvement is still uh, figuring out a way to get more people involved with varying skills. And back to you. Okay, I have uh, I got four points done. Uh, I guess it would be more like two points done because I should be half a point each instead of one point each. Anyway, um, I'm going to give myself uh, six out of ten. So basically half, and I showed up at at stand up. Um, team, uh, I think we should be able to go with a nine because you're still making progress. You'd, not as much as you wanted to, but you're still making progress. Um, and the process improvement is definitely reconnecting with everybody and, and trying to get, um, trying to get new people involved, um, so that we have different points of view. Um, I have, a, I guess that wraps it up for stand up. I have a question about. Uh, whether you want to keep um, doing this on Wednesdays or if you want to move back to Thursdays. Uh, last um, hockey game uh, for my grandson is tomorrow. You are still um, muted. I thought it was baseball season that was that was making the switch, making us change the date. But I wrote down baseball, but I I, I may have. There, yeah, from hockey. there is lots of baseball stuff, but they, well, maybe they were just all, all on the same, all Thursday at, uh, at six, uh, my time. Uh, well, he, his last, um, hockey game is tomorrow at six. I'll put it that way. Um, the baseball games are continuing, but they're Tuesday night and Sunday night. And he's got a couple of, uh, a couple of them that are, um, like, and they're all fairly, they're getting later. Like the, the one tonight, um, is at quarter after eight. Like they're going to oh. be, they're going to be under the lights. Right. right. So <laughs> quarter after eight until like 10, maybe it's, <laughs> and the school isn't quite done yet. So he's going to be dragging a little bit tomorrow when he goes into <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Um, do you want to, do you want to stay with Wednesday or do you want to move it back to Thursday? Um, I think um, I, I think Thursday's good. Yeah, are you going to send a notice out? Uh, I will send a notice out, and I will put the team wiki speed in the BCC instead of the CC because that's what it went out to as last time. Okay. Um. So back to Thursday at five your time, or because you had I thought you had a, a a timing conflict with that. Uh, because you, there was a couple of times you could only stay for half an hour because you had something else happening. Um, I'm not aware of anything, and uh, okay, maybe it changed. Yeah, yeah, and um, so yeah, yeah, and and then we had made it, yeah, five my time because then in the winter that turns out to to seven. Now it's six, and in the winter it's seven, right? Mm -hmm. Um, or it's actually my time that shifts around, but my time moves an hour closer to your time. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, yeah. So, so right now, six your time, and then in the winter it'll be seven your time, right? Oh, uh, no, I'm earlier. So right, right now it's is it five o'clock your time or four o'clock? Uh, here it's four. Okay. So do you? Uh, want uh, do you want it an hour later? Because uh, I think it was an hour later that we. I, think, I I like the idea of it being earlier here, because okay. if we get anybody in the east, then that's oh. seven p.m. their time. Okay. And the base we was usually Pacific time, so if we make the base, uh, four p.m. Four p.m. Pacific. Okay. Pacific, then that's uh, varies 
from uh, from five to six for you, yep. and six, and uh, it's always the same time the, for you, and always the same time in the east. It's always three hours difference. Yep. For the yeah, yeah. Well, I think that sounds good. Okay. Uh, and then uh, actually, uh, my son is in a closer time zone to. Uh, to uh, Joe now, so if we we happen to, um, it's fifteen or sixteen hours later. So that's um, from four p.m. here, eight, seven a.m. there. Uh, yeah, no, I think that's the that's the that's the best. Well, actually, then the, we would probably switch it if, if on the rare occasion that you could be on. So uh, never mind that. Okay. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay, so uh, I just want to get in my head um, what you're trying to get done this year. So, did, have you gotten the tank fill, um, the tank level working on your um, water system yet? No, I haven't. I haven't uh, installed the tank. So that that's the other thing. I've got the project okay. in the box here. Okay. Uh, I wanted to do the Sun, Sun Founder first because uh, okay. that, that's like central to the LRW. Okay. And um, what you're trying to get done with um, the Sun Founder this year is get it built, get it moving around under, like, are we doing its own control? Or are we trying to get it to work with the uh, the follow the ball thing? Or are we trying to get it working with a laptop or a phone kind of? The the follow me is to me that is the basic thing, and okay. and we, uh, you know, we may or may not use the uh, Sun Founder software because I, I imagine Ross has has something. I'm sure there's Ross. Yep. Thing and you know uh, the. This gimbal has there's a DJI software for it, and it follows um, it. It locks on your face or any object. So I was filming a um, front end loader, and it locks on that. And then I was able to right, raise it up over my head, where I couldn't control it, but it it would continue to follow the. You 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 draw an outline around the the object. And that's uh, probably a simple AI kind of thing, or or it's actually just a camera, uh, you know the the facial, the, mm -hmm. the selfie. But this this one, it 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 the gimbal actually follows you around. Once it it locks on your face, it follows you around, so you can walk around 180 degrees, and it follows you. Okay. So uh, that, that would be ideal, but we we can also use a target or something like a ball or whatever. Well, I don't know whether Ross has um, a, an interface where you could draw something on the screen. Um, I think it would be easier to follow a um, brightly colored ball, which is what they have in, in some of the demos. Um, yeah. I don't know how easy that is, is going to be to wear on your belt, for example, but um, it will... Uh, like the, the libraries, you can, you can follow a lot of stuff. You can make maps. I don't know that we want to get into that. Um, but it's, um, well, we got a lot of options. And then of course, once we get it running in Ross one, we're going to have to port it to Ross two. But, um, so you're looking to build something bigger and then kind of strap the, the sun founder on top of it. Um, and have the signals basically just control bigger motors and, and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Like, uh, what do you think? Uh, once we kind of get this going, I guess the yeah, you know the the rock hopper that we have probably the Sun Founder could it could it's strong enough to carry the Sun Founder. Oh, it probably um, is. Yep. Um, but you, I mean, you wouldn't necessarily need all of the Sun Founder. Well, it's yeah. the easiest though. 
Um, yeah. you might, you might not need the wheels, but you can disconnect the, the motor driver and feed the, the, um, rock crawler and then yeah. just keep the gimbal and the camera. Yeah. You know, you had wanted um, to add the, um, the distance sensor, not sonar, the other one. The, uh, li LIDAR. LIDAR. You'd wanted yeah. to add the LIDAR beside the camera on the gimbal. Yep. Okay, so that one is gonna. That, I don't think I've seen an example of that one yet, but I'm I'm sure we can find something. Uh, no, I, I I watched the thing and it was lidar. There, there's there's I I I saved it somewhere, so I'll send it to you. It's oh, I've seen, the, yeah, I've seen lots of lidar where they, it does the spinny thing, but I haven't seen the single point lidar that, that we would uh, that we have on the tank yeah. level, for example. This one, this one was a. Um, uh, cheap lighter, I'm pretty sure. Uh, hmm. Cheap static lighter. Okay. Um, mm, I think so. I think so. Um, it was. Um, it, it, it showed a, a sort of a a mapping. It was kind of doing a, a little bit of trying to trying to think. It was it, he he wrote a little algorithm that said how far it was. It was using it as a range sensor. Mm-hmm. And and he he um it, it, the algorithm was to how close am I closest object and you know, a couple of things like that. Okay, so that was the pan back and forth, and then basically um, tell you which ones which ones closest, because I've seen that without the camera. Yeah, I, I'll have to look, and you know I, I have to verify even that it's the lidar. Um, I think it was, but uh, I'll I'll look that one up. Yeah, and okay, and also now I'm registered in a half marathon in Vancouver in a year, so uh, I'm I, That's I'm goal. targeting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I, I, there will be some in the fall too. Okay. But, um, yeah, so the the fall is more like uh, maybe take whatever we've got, like the the rock hopper, and and play with it in uh, a bit. Uh, but the um but the the yeah uh, i'm i'm aiming for uh something that could be banned from the half marathon that would stimulate that would work well enough that they might ban it from the half marathon. well um now you had talked about uh the uh, hoverboards um uh, i was talking about the uh tadpole um trike Oh right, okay. Well, that, would de that would definitely be. Um, yeah, because yeah, you can hop on. <laughs> yeah. What? So, so the, the rock, something like a bigger rock hopper. Yeah. Uh, would uh, or just doing something from scratch with the wagons, like we thought. Okay, so would, the, and like maybe a toy cat, a kid's toy wagon. Well, and that's that's kind of what I was thinking because some of those hmm. things are. Um, a, a guy that I work with yeah. took the 12 volt battery out of his kids, um, his three year olds, um, power wagon kind of, uh, thing. And he right. replaced it with his 20 volt, um, drill battery. And, uh, it goes like stink. Um, <laughs> he was trying to figure out a, a, a wireless kill switch for it so that the kid didn't, you know, go too far away. Um, but all the noise from the electronics and the, uh, the geared DC motor made the wireless absolutely impossible. He couldn't, he couldn't quiet the noise from that thing uh, enough to get a wireless signal through. Did he think of, of, uh, infrared? He hasn't, oh. yeah. He hasn't tried infrared yet because then he'd have to pull it out and mount it on top, and the right. kid, the kid can uh, mess with it. Uh, he was trying to to keep it like right beside the motor controller, like basically disconnect the battery, right? And uh, mm -hmm. he tried, well, probably two or three weekends. He couldn't figure out how to do it, so he bought a, mm -hmm. a, a cordless drill specifically for the two batteries and the charger so that the kid could play around with it for, I think it lasts about 35, 45 minutes. 
And by that time he's, he's tired of the kid running into stuff. So, <laughs> cool. but right now he can only use it in the backyard because if he takes it into the front yard, he's, he's scared that, uh, because his son is related to him, he's, he's expecting him to take off down the street. <laughs> okay. But, but, uh, yeah. And I have one, uh, off camera, uh, I, I was, that story was just basically to say that the vehicle might be able to keep up to you, especially if yeah. it doesn't have a toddler on it. Um, you yeah. might be able to, it wouldn't probably work at 20 volts. You might have to bump it up to 24 or 30, but right. it might be able to keep up to you, except yeah. on a trail, the, none, of the, none of those things have suspension. So the thing would just bounce all over Hell's Creation. But. And there's a couple of, uh, there's one. There's the one guy who invents uh, uh, trikes here. Uh, has patents on trikes. Uh, I told you about the the world mm -hmm. speed record. Uh, and he long time ago invited me to come to his place. So I I uh, I was going to tell him about the project and see see if he's interested. Um, it, he probably he, has he enough does, junk parts around that he could build whatever it was that you were thinking of. My neighbor has. Uh, a trike from him, a Delta trike, and and his Delta trikes tilt. He just made the front wheel extend out, kind of like those uh, uh, Hell's Angels type things. So Chopper, the yeah. front wheel, and and so then if he if he if he turns, the wheel tilts, and the whole thing tilts. <laughs> and I think he has a, uh, some kind of flexible joints at the back, so the black wheels kind of tilt on a turn. And he makes these for disabled people, but my neighbor has one and it's, it's, he just loves it. And this guy usually never gets out of his car or his truck and he goes everywhere with it, it uh, because, you know, you, it just, it, it goes according to how fast you're pedaling and it's, it's, he, uh, it's really fun. And so he's perfectly capable. So I'll, I, I'll see if he's interested in it. I think it had, I think it has application to disabled people because one guy I knew in California who used a Segway, mm -hmm. but because his knees were bad. Uh -huh. And the issue is if you wanted to, some people can walk, but they can't pull or push a cart. And that, that this could be kind of good, good for that. So I'll, I'll talk to him and pitch it that way. There's a guy who, uh, I think I told you the, the the bike guy said he 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 was only interested in in <laughs> power uh, in uh, those dangerous uh, robot wars. Uh, war, war. So um, recently, I have seen a couple of podcasts about uh, disabled people using um, the VR helmets, mm -hmm. and the the VR helmet is actually the user interface. So they have a, a menu hanging or they look to one side, look to the other side kind of thing. And then it goes down to the uh, wheelchair or whatever assistive device they're using. So they're wearing like these goggle things. Um, I think they weren't using the, the Apple ones. They were using, they looked like big sunglasses and they had right. only, they had one camera in the middle right. um, so that you could see what's happening out beside you and then the stereo vision was for um tracking your eyes and having you you know blink on on whatever things you were you were mm -hmm. selecting so that kind of a user interface would probably work really well on a trike or on um a motorized wheelchair yeah i don't know, I don't know if it would be so great to have them looking through a camera though um because your, your depth perception would, be, would suck yeah yeah I mean, uh, I, I was just thinking of the um, someone who, uh, you know, uh, can't push or pull things, but can walk. Say they're using a uh, try uh, one of those um, canes that has the tripod on the bottom or mm -hmm. or a walker. So, you know, people put things in their walker, but if they want it's limited the capacity and it's, if it's heavy, then it's difficult. So well, then um, if, if something would follow them without interfering with them. And then you would have a lot of safety things that the thing doesn't run into them. 
but I don't know. It might might make it. more sense to make the walker powered so that they can lean on it when they need to. Uh, but most of the time, it's just kind of, um, yeah. But then it'd be in their way. That, that's cool. That's another. I, that's another thing that mm -hmm. the thing. Uh, yeah. So the person gets tired or feels it's uh, uneven ground, and uh, mm -hmm. so then then they use the walker or, yeah, yeah. So, so I've I've got a powered wheelbarrow um, that I picked up for cheap because the controller yeah, was garbage. Yeah. Um, I have not been able to find the uh, a replacement controller, and I was just using it with a with a set of batteries and a, and a contactor just on off, and I blew up the contactor. I'm not sure what I did wrong. I think the there's a circuit when you open under current, um, the inductor in the motor makes a high voltage and, and causes trouble with the contacts. I had a snubber on it. Or at least I thought I had a snubber on it. Apparently it didn't work very well because I blew up a $120 contactor. So what, what's a snubber? Um, if you, you know, when you, um, are, are you familiar with when you open or you close um, a circuit on a coil and it charges up and then there's has some energy inside the magnetic coil. And then when you open it, there's a big spark. Okay. So the snubber circuit, when you open it up, it gives you a little bit of capacitance and a little bit of resistance to bleed that off. So it doesn't give you a big spark, um, which wears out the contacts on the, on the contactor. It's right. contactor is just a big relay. So, um, it's like the contactor that I put in there was stupidly sized. It was sized for my car. It, it right. was, was capable of 500 amps continuous. And I managed to blow it up on, um, the wheelbarrow would be taking 20 amps, maybe at 12 volts. Like, right. So it didn't make sense, but it doesn't make sense. And my yeah. wife is not happy with me for blowing up the contactor because now I don't have a contactor. Uh, <laughs> anyway, anyway, I okay. should uh, stop recording. And you said you want you had some stuff um, off camera, yeah, yeah, right? Just, just one thing. Just one thing. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna hit the button.